get a load of this junkyard collector. Wandering around, mumbling to himself, sifting through rusty scraps of useless stuff. I bet his house looks like, uh, like this. It looks like this, and this, and this. Because this junkyard dog is actually a junkyard god a powerhouse who's earned tens of millions scavenging and selling abandoned auto parts. And shame on you for thinking otherwise. What one man might call junk, I call treasure. How much is this engine worth, Tony? Chevy 5.3 Benjax, about an $1,800 motor. I'm Ron Sturgeon. I'm a junkyard expert. I used to own a chain of salvage yards, and it made me filthy rich. Somebody out there driving down the road needs this. It's a lucrative business, properly managed. It's a very interesting business model. When you could pay $100 for a junk car, sell the engine out of it for $150, and still have the rest of the car, that's pretty good business. Good? More like incredible. Considering Ron eventually sold his empire for a whopping $23 million. That's a hell of a payday for a guy who started out practically homeless. When I was a senior in high school, my dad died and left me a 65 Volkswagen, $2,000, and no place to live. I moved into a mobile home and started working on other people's Volkswagens. That was all I knew. I had to do something to eat. I accumulated about 35 junk cars that we were using to fix the other cars. The, the catalytic converters get a lot of money for those, don't we? Within weeks, I realized that I could make more money selling parts off the cars than I ever could working on them. Every week, I would go to the salvage auction, buy a few more cars, drag them in, and we'd sell a few more parts. And it didn't take very long for the junkyard business to get quite big. But collecting a big pile of parts is something any old junker can do. Figuring out a way to keep track of them, well, that's what put Ron over the top. As we grew and we got more employees, it became obvious that we needed better methods of keeping track of what we had, because we had four or five phone lines at that point, four or five salespeople working on the phone lines, and they needed to be able to look a part up and see if we had it. In 1986, we put our inventory on the computer. The computers gave me a huge competitive edge. Computers allowed us to buy more cars, sell more product, so that we could grow even more rapidly to a whole new client base. Over the next few years, we doubled sales every year, and we grew to six locations. 150 employees and 15 million in sales, the 30% net profit. And when you're making that kind of cash, everyone wants a piece of it. Ford came along and wanted to buy us. They paid about $15 million for the company. But the only thing more impressive than selling your company to one of the world's biggest automakers. So do you think he's going to be willing to negotiate or you think we're just wasting our time? Is buying it back. In the long run, it was a terribly bad fit for Ford. They ended up divesting the division, selling it back to me, and then I turned it around and made it profitable and sold it to another public company. And selling his company not once, but twice, has afforded Rod one hell of a life. I always told him that the junkyards were a dirty business. But what can I say? Made me filthy rich. How much am I worth? I got a million square feet of real estate. Arguably, I have more than I can spend. I've certainly got plenty of cars, and I've owned as many as 56, but today I own 12 exotic cars worth a couple million. My favorite car is the Lamborghini Huracan. It's the most enthralling car I've ever owned. My home is 10,000 square feet with a 10-car garage. It's worth two or three million dollars. It's a wonderful place, and I love it. The real estate taxes on that house are $1,500 a week. This is my museum. Probably $5 million worth of toys. Well, we've got everything from boats to cars to dog toys. People say it's the repository of cool stuff. This is a shipbuilder's model. They would have made one of these. Today, a model like this, easily worth $100,000. Here we've got a Jerome classic model car made from the 90s. Today, worth about $35,000 and highly coveted by collectors. OK, boys, come in. Love the dogs, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels have three now. They've got their own room, their own door, and their own address. The joke around here is that I'm leaving everything to the dogs. I think maybe it has everybody scared. Where are we going, Daddy? You know, I feel really blessed at this point in my life, and I'm absolutely convinced the last third of my life is going to be the best. 
headed down that road in an exotic car with the best woman in the world and my three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. I couldn't be happier. Feels good to be a blue collar millionaire.